Oh shit, I'm already recording. Oh, okay, let me let me act like I didn't just come in here and set up the camera. Oh yeah. Welcome. Welcome to my home. Okay. If you see sweat dripping out my face, no you didn't. I just got back from the gym. I worked out, walked on the little tread of the mill, okay, you know, getting that exercise in. I'm such a good girl. Feel proud of me. Um, and I'm about to do what people usually do after working out in the gym, which is eat dinner, okay? It's about nine o'clock, and I'm about to have a, oh, you a little too high. Come on, get on my level, baby. Get on my level. It's uh, <laughs> 9.30 a.m. Turn on that fan because it's hot everywhere I go. And uh, I'm about to eat a burger. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this is the burger I'm about to eat. And I'm going to eat it with you. I'm just going to eat and talk, I guess. After this intro. <sighs> is it too dark? Is it too dark, beloveds? Is it too dark? Do you like my shirt, by the way? I got it from H&M. It's a Naruto shirt. Um, so I'm eating the food that he told me not to eat, which would be fries. Uh, mm, mm. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. Uh -huh. But I'm not sorry. You know that you know that film? I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. And this is the burger that I got. Now, you know in America they always say that the burgers aren't like the pictures. Um where I am, the burgers are like the pictures, okay? There's no other way to put it. The burgers are like the pictures. So I've been thinking lately about what I want to do with my life. And to be honest, I don't really know. Mm. Mm. idea what I'm gonna do next I was thinking how long I'm gonna stay in the country that I'm in and I have a contract for one year and I've been thinking about do I do two years and leave or do I leave after one year now I talked to Stu Boo Stu is all for me leaving after one year however I do think it would be better if I left after two years. Just stay here, do some self searching, grinding on myself, get me together, save up some money, and then go back to the States and try to figure out what I'm going to do in the States again. Do I want to continue to teach? Do I want to pursue social media? I definitely want to pursue social media. But how do I make it? I don't know. I do feel like I'm just getting older, though. Not that social media has a timeline. But, mm, I guess if I was younger and I became really popular on social media, I did run the possibility of being the person who I didn't want to be on social media. Does that make sense? So, it works out for me to wait until I'm more mature. Which, I'm quite mature, if you haven't noticed. But, <laughs> 
but mature in other ways. Like my self-esteem, while it's pretty high, needs to be higher when you're putting yourself on the internet. I need to be more comfortable with my body. Well, I'm quite comfortable with my body, but I don't know. It's a weird thing because I don't think my content will ever be for children. So it's not about the profanity. It's not about, I guess I have to be used to my body being sexualized. The idea of being sexualized when I'm not doing it myself still makes me a little uncomfortable. I've said it once, I'll say it twice. I like the idea of women finding me attractive. Men finding me attractive is like, eh. So, I don't know what the future holds. Stu's moving in with another girl. Yeah. And no, this isn't like our open relationship moving in with another girl. This is just moving in with another girl. She was someone that I considered friendly with. But once I went to China, she just never reached out to me. So, it was like, okay. But she's been spending a lot of time with Stu. Like, I, the way I hear it is she relies on him a lot. And Stu is just doing it. I think he misses having someone to rely on him. Because I used to do that, rely on him. I don't know. I told him. You can't become someone's reliability, okay? They can't rely on you so much so to the point that it gets in the way of your own plans. Okay, because then, like, it's kind of like if people rely on you or they're using you in a certain manner and you can't live up to that standard, then it's just like, what now? have a cat together but it's mostly like she knew some people that found a cat and then she asked Stuart to take care of the cat until she moved into her place but she doesn't know when she's gonna move into her place so Stuart has been taking care of this cat for a while and it's just like well now Stuart's gonna have an emotional attachment to this cat he's been taking care of it I don't have the answers. I asked him, is she like paying, paying for like the cat food and stuff like that, you know? Since you're taking care of the cat for her. He's talking about the cat had to go to the vet. I'm like, is she paying for this? He was like, she paid half of it. Y'all just went half these on the cat. At this point, it's y'all's cat. I'm so processing how I feel about that. <laughs> I go overseas and my husband adopts a fur baby with one of my female friends that doesn't talk to me anymore once I went overseas. Objectively, it sounds bad. I'm gonna be honest. Objectively, it sounds bad. Like, if she were to watch this video, she'd be like, that bitch, Leah. But also, it's true. To my revelation of the situation, this is the truth. So. I mean, again, me and Stu are in an open relationship. But... I guess to a certain extent, 
I thought the open relationship part would be more physical and not emotional. Because that is a lot of emotional support. I don't know. I asked Stu, you know, why are you giving her all of these emotional support? Not to be catty. I just know Stu. And in the past, when I met Stu, even though he helped me a lot, you know, <laughs> Stu was talking shit about me and all that. So for him to just be doing it out of the kindness of his heart is like, okay. I think a part of him feels, like I said earlier, the need to be needed. But I don't know. I can't focus on that. You need to focus on me. Getting my life together, actually doing what I set out to do or I mentally said I was going to do before I got here. I had myself to sleep last night. Not last night, the other night. I cried myself to sleep. I know YouTubers like to reenact things. Would you guys like me to reenact myself crying to sleep? Mm -hmm. Let me know in the comments down below. Would you like, Aah! I would like that. No, I wasn't like that, but I myself to sleep last night, the other night, and told myself that I don't get to live in the past anymore. I don't. And I don't think I was necessarily living through the past. I was confronting the past, and that had a very healing and astounding re reality for me. That was really astounding for me. I had to confront the past so that I could deal with it in a way. I regret nothing. I guess I could regret, like, You know what I regret? Okay, here's what I regret. I regret that I'm fucking sick right now. That's one regret. Another regret? Like, legit, legitimate regret. I gotta think hard about this, because this is like, the, I'm gonna name this the one thing I regret. The one thing in life that I regret. My thoughts are racing. You know, I don't think a lot before I speak, but like, I've been wanting to think more before I speak. The one thing in life that I kind of regret but I'm not even sure if I really regret it, okay? But the one thing in life that I kind of regret, I'm not too sure, but I regret not taking the depression medicine. I feel like that could have kick-started a lot of things that I just had to let time heal, okay? Now, this is not to say that you can't just heal naturally from your pains or confronting or your shadow realm. And this is not even to get rid of your shadow parts, but to mix them in with your light self. Um, that's a lot of mumbo jumbo to say. I looked at my past and I said, you know what? That sucked and it wasn't okay. And then I cried about it for about 
two, three, four years. <laughs> that's the best thing. That's the best way I can say. And then I was like, okay, well now I want my future to be different. That's just the long, short story. Short story, long, short, long. Okay. But during that process, there was an opportunity to get on uh, antidepressants and anti-anxiety medicine. And I was too far gone to actually... <laughs> too far gone to actually do it. <sighs> Look that way. <laughs> Let's act like that didn't happen. I was too far gone to actually use that help. And now as an adult, I mean, I was an adult then, but now as a more stable-minded adult, I do wonder if I had actually took that step, if I took the help that was being offered to me, where would I be now if I actually took that help? Part of me might feel like, eh, maybe I wouldn't be where I am now. Maybe I wouldn't have the clarity that I have now because I went through all of those raw emotions, the emotions that I felt like needed to be felt personally for me. And that's not for everyone. Realistically, that's not for everyone. But for me, it needed to be felt. And I am a better person now, having felt that, having said what I had to say, getting off my chest what I needed to get off my chest. Now it's like, now I gotta work on myself. Now I gotta work on like, like not being a bitch and then also not being a bitch. And this is like in both ways, okay? Like I, I could do a whole video on this. Not being a bitch in the way of not being mean to people, not treating people like they shouldn't be treated, not snapping at people, you know, not being an asshole, but then not being a bitch, like not being weak, not being, not letting someone talk their shit and just smiling, okay? Because I do that. And I do think that it could be perceived that I am weak when I do that, I guess, a certain part of me is like self-preservation, but I don't necessarily like that, okay? So here's an example. There was a situation at the company that I'm at right now where we were having a meeting, a big meeting with teachers from other schools, okay? And so at the meeting, I was asking questions, you know, just being myself. I'm a little wacky, I understand, but even when I was a student, I would ask a lot of questions. I just wanna understand. And if I'm not engaged, that's something I know about myself. If I'm not engaged, if I'm not like avidly engaged, it's going, it's not even going in the ear, to be honest. I'm not taking anything of what you said if I'm not avidly engaged. I have to like, my mind has to dissect what you're saying for it to really process. And even then, what do you do with that, that once it processed? Do I tap back into it and think about it later? I don't know, you know, I'm still learning a lot about myself and I think that's a lifelong journey. But anyway, I have to avidly be engaged for me to learn anything when I am being lectured or something like that, right? At this situation, I was like, you know, cracking jokes, you know, just, you know, just engaging myself. I don't think that it was too much of a big deal for everyone else, but like there, is, there was this voice in a jokey manner but still there's this voice that was like, oh, can't you like shut up? Like there's this voice that is repeating like, why are you always talking? And at one point it was like, if you be quiet for the rest of this activity, I will buy you lunch. I will buy you lunch. And she said this in front of everyone and I was just like, okay, well I'm not gonna let this hurt me. Let me just shut up so I can get a free lunch. Like I was like, okay, well I'm gonna uh -huh, get that free lunch. So I was quiet. And then at the end of the uh, event, I was like, okay, well I'm, what are you gonna get me for lunch? And she was like, oh no, I meant dinner. And when she said that, I immediately was like, my, there was a red flag. Like everything that she says to me, like it's not necessarily nice, but like, you know, like she's, she's not really nice. I'm from the South, I'm a little sensitive. So 
you know, maybe I'm just a little sensitive. You know, black girl, I've noticed that black people speak to each other like that anyway. So there was, there was a lot of, like, excuses for that type of, like, behavior or that interaction. She's from the North. Stop being sensitive. That's what I tell myself. Like, I'm not going to cry over how someone treats me. Even though I don't necessarily, in that moment, I was like, I don't think that I really do anything to deserve being like spoken to like this you know what I mean like I can be I can be annoying but like to just speak to me like this in front of people and like I notice people will often make me the butt of a joke and it's just like I would never do that I don't think I have I would never do that to someone especially not in front of them and like also if I have something to say about someone I'd also say it in front of them but it wouldn't be like making a butt of the joke it'd just be like oh yeah like there's a co-worker at my job and I she's kind of bitchy I call her the ice queen but I tell her she's an ice queen to her face the other day she yelled at me she was like Aaliyah be quiet and I was like stop yelling at me I'm sensitive which is an inside joke um, <laughs> at my job because like she will like she's she's been known to snap at people from time to time and I was just like I think that's just her personality so you just need to start talking to her like she talks to people okay she's very abrupt she's very direct talk to her abruptly and directly and that's the thing when I was talking to someone and they were like oh yeah my feelings were hurt I said that to them and they were like okay, I will do better next time. And then the next time they did it and they told me, oh, I told her, stop t yelling at me. I'm sensitive, you know? And that was the inside joke. So the next time she yelled at me, I was like, stop yelling at me. I'm sensitive. Because I gave my friend the advice to be direct. I gave my friend that advice. So I got to take it too. So yes. That's the only person that I've been able to stand up and, like, say, like, hey, no, don't treat me like that. But it's someone I interact with on the daily, and I really don't think that her intentions are to be hurtful. You know what I mean? And I don't think the other girl's intentions are to be hurtful. Like, some people just don't know how they come off. And, like, that's even me. I don't see myself from other people's point of view. However, there's just certain things I wouldn't do. Anyway, the reason that I was thinking about her was because uh, recently I went to like an event with some teachers and they were talking and they were like, you know, that girl is a bitch. And I was like, huh, I don't know how she like interacts with other people, but I know like the interactions that I've had with her weren't so nice. I wouldn't necessarily call her a bitch, but like... I, I guess I can see where people are coming from, you know what I mean? And they were like, that girl is a bitch. And I'm like, okay. I'm not like talking too much on it. I'm just like, okay. So other people feel some type of way about how she just talks to people. And I say, well, that's a New Yorker thing. New Yorkers will like talk to people kind of like they shit and then say, well, I'm from New York, y'all too sensitive. And like, it's something that like, like I'm not just picking it up. It's something that we've heard before, right? Like New York and people from the North will be like, I'm rude, but I'm not really rude. You should see some rude people that I know, you know? And so, <laughs> so it's just like, ah, ha, I'm from the South, I'm a Southern Belle. So it's just like, I don't necessarily get down like that. But you know, it's not something new. I've always heard that people from the North are a little abra abrasive, 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 okay? And especially if you're soft. I used to get bullied, so I'm just a softy. So it's just like, eh, so I just kept my mouth shut. But there was one thing where one of the coworkers, not at my same school, but one of my coworkers said, uh, yeah, and one of the other co-workers that we know, he doesn't even like her because of how she treats you. It wasn't anything that she did to him. It was how she treats me. And I was like, oh. And, and it kind of made me like, huh. Like, you know, I went, huh. And I thought about it later, and I was just like, huh. You know, and so this is why I think, huh, about it. Because one, 
all. Like, other people see how she, like, like, talks to me, and they're like, no, no, I don't like that. But another part of me is like, are you like, like, oh, I don't like how she treats Elite. Like, am I like the, am I the, like, you know, people often describe me as someone that's like kind of ditzy and da 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 da, right? Like ditzy, dumb, like, you know, like a soft, like I'm, you know? And so it's just like, oh, I don't like how she treated Aaliyah. Like, how is he viewing me in that moment, you know? And I don't know, you know, I could just leave it at, oh, well, but there was a part of me that was just like, maybe he views me as this, like, ditzy girl and like it's like yeah Leah can be annoying but like you're you're bullying the 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 I don't know how to best put it but it's just like oh when you bully the 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 mentally challenged you know what I mean does that, uh, I, don't cancel me for this later in life, okay? But when you, like, bully the mentally challenged, and it's just like, damn, you bully the mentally challenged? Like, you're an asshole. So, you know what I mean? Like, that's, so, I don't know how he, how he sees me to be like, wow, she, she talks rude to Aaliyah. I don't like her at all. Because for me, for someone, like, I could see someone talk rude to someone and be like, oh, that's kind of a rude person, you know what I mean? But for me to, like, I don't want anything to do with her, it's like, damn, like, you can be rude to someone and it won't be like, I don't want anything to do with you. I don't know your story between that, that person. But, like, for him to be like, hmm. I don't want anything to do. You know what I mean? This is a little tangent. Like, I already done finished eating. And, like, all of my videos are a little bit of a tangent. But that's what I wanted to share with you today. Um, I worked out. I ate a burger. I ate some videos. And uh, we're looking forward to the future. Although we don't really know where the future is going, we are still very hopeful. And that's a lot more than I could say, like, back in the past. Gosh, oh, you know that video? Like, I used to always end my videos with much love and positive vibes. I was trying to attract some positivity inside of my life. I needed some positivity inside of my heart. Oh. Man, I need to do a little clip for that and just put that in the beginning of the video so people know. I can sing. I'm gonna drop my next. I'm gonna drop a song. I want to drop a song. I want to do a thing where I drop the song like every month, but uh, I didn't. So, the future, the future, the future, future plans. So anyway, that is all that I want to share with you today. Um, and I got a headache. So I'm gonna go drink some water, babies, yeah. And that's probably your sign that you should drink some water too, okay? Or some pineapple juice. Depends on what you're gonna be doing later on tonight. Um, much love and positive vibes. And I hope to see you guys, you guys again. You guys again next time. Yeah!